The market had a huge turnaround rally today with volatility crashing yet again. The VIX coming down from the high of above 21 down to below 18. That's over an 18% move to the downside in just a matter of hours. Since last Friday, the VIX is actually down over 25%. So what is going on in the market? Well, let's take a look at a post that we made here earlier today in Discord. Uh, this is levels on the S&P 500. We actually highlighted here this 5,400 level, which was the large gamma exposure concentration to the downside. This was a huge negative gamma exposure. You can see this was an important level earlier in the week and then again today. Double bottom here off of this 5400 level but one of the things we highlighted was as the market was bouncing here at 5400 large volume was coming in today at the 5500 strike and that was something that we look for this is a big key when we come into these what we call dealer cluster zones these are where gamma exposure is concentrated either on the negative or positive side and we look for these reversal signals like large volume coming in above where the market is currently Currently bouncing from. So that was a big signal early on. The S&P at the time was trading at 54.53. This was right around noon Eastern. And so obviously the rally was just getting started at that point, ultimately closing much higher though. Let's take a look at the S&P 500's GEX levels. As of the market close, we can see here the full effect and force of this huge rally today coming off of this 5400 level up into the 5550 level. Obviously, this is now the largest gamma exposure concentration here. There is a huge flip today. We went from negative gamma exposure to positive gamma exposure, breaching this 5500 strike. If you recall, at the beginning of the morning, we had the large GEX at 5400. This was the negative gamma exposure. That, of course, has since reduced here. And the whole gamma exposure structure has shifted because we flipped positive today, bursting through this 5,500 strike. So this is what we look for, these big flip days, which tells us now we are in positive gamma exposure territory and dealers are going to be buying the dip and selling the rip as price trades higher. And so we've already tagged the big 5,500 strike. We may see a, a few days of consolidation, but we already are noticing gamma exposure growing at the 5600 strike and so we could see a little bit of consolidation here before another leg higher as long as we stay above the zero gamma exposure line which can shift as price dynamics change over time but as long as we stay in positive gamma exposure territory we're going to be looking for these higher uh, concentrations as targets in the coming week and next week. And this is something I think a lot of traders get wrong about gamma exposures. They're expected to be a static indicator or a static level. As the market shifts, as more money pours into the option market at various strike prices, we can see the gamma exposure dynamic shift. And that's why it's so important to have real-time GEX data because the at the money strikes are going to be the most important factor in in measuring gamma exposure. This is just a conceptual uh, chart here to show you how gamma works as price approaches and at the money contract. So if you have a large concentration of gamma exposure at a particular strike price, as price moves into that level, it's going to accelerate. And that's why we see these moves into the largest gamma exposure levels. And oftentimes we see large bounces or reversals like we saw today at the 5,400 strike from those levels as well. So we looked at the S&P 500. Now let's look at the Qs. We're seeing a very similar picture, of course, on the Qs today. We saw semiconductors really leading the way. So it's no surprise that the Qs also had a huge rally up into positive gamma gamma exposure territory. So tomorrow and Thursday is going to be really key to be watching these larger gamma exposure concentrations at the 475 and the 480. Similar to the S&P 500, we want to watch and see are these gamma exposure concentrations growing tomorrow and into Friday, signaling that another potential leg could be coming. Taking a look at some recent economic data, we had CPI coming in this morning uh, relatively in line. The, the issue was with core CPI. This is all items excluding food and energy. Uh, actually increased higher than expected, just slightly higher, 0.3 over 0.8. 
0.2% expectations. Uh, this is likely the reason for the initial sell-off uh, in the first hour of trading this morning, but the market rebounded very nicely. But the larger problem seems to be for the Fed, uh, are they going to be able to do a 50 basis point rate cut either in the September or in the November meeting? And if we look at the CME Group's Fed Watch tool, we can actually see here that the probabilities for a 25 basis point rate cut in the next meeting here in September have risen to 85%. Pretty high probability that it's not going to be a 50 basis point rate cut in the September meeting. And if we just drill down a little bit further into the probabilities table. Here's that 85% we were talking about for the September meeting. Looking ahead to the November meeting, there's actually uh, a 47.5% probability that we could see another 50 basis point rate cut after this rate cut coming up here next Wednesday. And these probabilities are shifting so much so that we can see potentially 200 basis points worth of rate cuts heading into next September. So really interesting here uh, what the market is expecting when it comes to Fed rate cut probabilities. And overall, that's really not a great sign for the market. I mean, markets are still near all time highs, you know, despite a little bit of uh, recent sell off. But if we just zoom out here on the chart, I mean, look at how far and how fast we have risen here. Um, you know, over the last year, year and a half. So, you know, really in the past year, we've gone from 4,000 to 5,500, a huge move. And so this is overall fairly concerning to be at these lofty levels here, what looks to be like some sort of double top forming. I don't put a lot of stock into you know, these technical indicators here alone, but it is interesting that we often see these patterns emerge near pivotal points in the market. And so if the Fed is planning on doing 200 basis points of rate cuts, according to market probabilities at least, the potential here is that this is because the economy is softening and inflation is cooling. Market expectations are that this is going to be necessary for the Fed to do in order to bring interest rate policy in line with the economy. And so what does that mean? Well, softer economic conditions oftentimes are going to result in softer markets. And so, you know, it wouldn't be surprising to see some sort of pullback in the next year. Now, we don't necessarily believe this is going to start tomorrow, so we can easily see you know, based on the data, we could easily see, as I mentioned, uh, some consolidation here over the coming days before another leg higher. As long as we're in a positive gamma exposure environment, you know, this is the path that we are expecting. If there is, if we see a resurgence in volatility, however, a flip back into negative gamma exposure, at that point, we would start getting more on the defensive. And so let's just jump into a few names that we're watching heading into tomorrow's trading session. First off is Tesla. We mentioned Tesla last night, had a kind of a muted move today. It's trading at 228.13. We've been watching this 230 strike. We are in positive gamma exposure territory, and so we are looking for a move into this 230 strike, potentially into the 240 strike in the coming weeks. This is something we've got our eye on as a potential level of interest. I'm considering adding some short-term butterfly spreads into the September 20th and maybe end of the month uh, expirations, you know, targeting this 230 strike. So this would be like selling the 230s, buying the 225s and the 235s on the wings. That's a play that we're considering looking at here on Tesla. Another name that I'm watching is AMD. AMD had a big move today, now strongly in positive gamma exposure territory after the big move today up over 5% here. Um, we reached this 145 strike, which was the largest positive gamma exposure concentration, now trading at the big 150. You can see here the positive gamma exposure all the way out into the 170 strike looks pretty large all in this zone here. And so I'm not saying this is going to make a beeline straight for these levels, but it is something interesting that we do have this uh, sort of call wall here that we've breached now and any move back, any kind of dip back down here could be a decent risk reward play to the long side. If we see a move back down into, let's say, the 147 or the 145 level, that could be an interesting 
uh, entry for an asymmetric risk reward play. If you guys are interested in this kind of analysis, head on over to our Discord. I'll put a link in the description below. We're going to continue the conversation there. We've got a very active community of traders and investors with all different types of strategies. So definitely check that out when you get a chance. If you guys are interested in accessing our Gamma Exposure Dashboard, head over to geeksoffinance.com where you can become a member. Our members also get access to our Geek University course, which is a five-hour option strategy, Gamma Exposure, and our trading approach. So definitely check that out when you get a chance. Again, links in the description below. Thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.